I just want to remind all of you that in his presence is fullness of joy. And just because you're in church doesn't mean that you get to experience the manifest presence of the Lord. Because your heart, you can be in church, your body can be in church and your heart elsewhere. And the Lord is going to interact and commune with this, the heart. Hallelujah. So tonight, our desire is that everybody in this place would be touched by heaven. But you decide whether that's going to be true or not. Because you, you decide whether or not you're going to touch heaven. Father responds, I don't, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter what crisis you're in, what state you're in. And I'll tell you right now, people go from crisis to crisis or you go from glory to glory. You choose. We look around and see many people that by the expression on their face, they must be going from crisis to crisis. But God's purpose is that you go from glory to glory. It's a choice that we make. Because we turn our hearts towards heaven and we begin to touch heaven because we touch him. We touch him by love and affection. That we're in such a way that it doesn't matter what's going on or what challenges we face or what things we're going through. We're just crying out to him saying, oh God, take full control. I yield myself to you. I give myself completely over. I surrender unto your name. Unto your word, O oh God, unto your spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's really all you got to do all day long. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can hear the Lord saying all the time, don't be sad. Don't be sad, be happy. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I don't dislike you. I love you. See, the age of the new covenant said that during that time when the Lord would come take his power and reign, and he has. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whether you realize it or not. Um, that they would return with singing undesigned everlasting joy be upon their head. They will obtain gladness and joy. I have all of that. I have returned with singing. I got everlasting joy on my head. You know, everlasting joy means you got joy that doesn't go away. Everlasting means it's always there. It's continually there. Hallelujah. Now I know circumstances and situations, they can get tough, especially for some people on Monday morning, but it appears to me that people have a rough day on Sunday as well. Maybe it's every day, I don't know. But we want to bring you up out of that place and we want you to come live in over here in this realm called uh, the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's come live over here in this realm of a continual manifest presence of the living God in your life. Hallelujah. It's good. It's good to be in his presence and to stay there. What a wonderful, what a wonderful miracle that God worked for us. That we could step inside his presence and live forever in his glory now and throughout the ages to come. Father, we thank you for your wonderful love and kindness. We thank you for your wonderful tender mercies. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Hallelujah. <laughs> Belenglosa, and see whether you realize it or not, that was actually for you to join into. It's like a song. It's like a song. It's just a strange song to mortal ears. Hallelujah. But what Paul said is that we begin praying in the Spirit, and then we pray with the understanding also. Then we sing in the Spirit, and we sing with the understanding also. And then among the Linda, Eranon de Deila. And Papa put us in the, in the ministry so that we can perfect the people around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what is the perfection all about? It's about you learning how to yield continually because there's a manifest presence. There's a, a glorious provision continually. And if you'll learn how to yield continually, you'll find yourself in heaven today. Hallelujah. You won't have to wait till later because wherever Jesus is, there's heaven. Jesus is, Jesus is heaven and Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Roman de la Mengara Sapoya. Halagalingara Satea. A lot of people have doctrinal ideas and opinions about the Word of God, but what Father has purposed that the Holy Ghost be manifested in your life, that His glory be seen upon your life in such a way that only Jesus is, is being revealed. And all those good things that we read about in the fruits of the Spirit and people start learning about them when they're very young in church, it is not, not for just information only. It's for you to understand exactly what you're supposed to be yielding your behavior to. Hallelujah. So I know that a smile is simple obedience to God. And that's why I'm going to smile. I know. Hallelujah. And then I know that what he does is he hooks up with that smile and that thanksgiving and that praise in my heart and he begins to provide for me joy unspeakable and full of glory. It doesn't matter what my situation might be either. I'm going to read to you what's going to be like at the end of the world. God is our refuge and its strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 46. Psalms 46 talks about the end of the world. And, and ha, I want you to listen very carefully. Therefore, will, therefore we will not fear, though the, be, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God. So, uh, in measure to that, you're standing there and you're seeing the mountains disappear before you. You seeing the earth being removed out of its place and staggering, as the prophet said, like a drunken man. You see the roaring of the seas and the swelling of the earth which we know to be massive earthquakes, what are you going to be doing? Huh? Or is the river going to be flowing? Well, not if there's just some little circumstance of life threatening you now and still in your joy. There can't be no river flowing. I've discovered that it doesn't matter what kind of thing that you're going through. There is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God. Hallelujah. They make glad the city of God's people. Hallelujah. That make glad those who know the Lord. God is my refuge and my strength. And how is that access? It's access because I come and take a drink from the rock Christ Jesus of that spiritual water that he gives, that wonderful grace of the Holy Ghost that when I begin to commune with, when I through obedience begin to participate with, our uh, rivers come flowing up out of my innermost being and all that God has presented and all the Father has provided is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You can make a choice right now whether you're going to be sad, stuck, indifferent, or filled up with all the good things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me finish reading this psalm soon as I started it. It's a good one. Of course, they're all really good ones. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. That's, I'm one of his tabernacles. I'm one of his dwelling places. Uh, did you realize that God, in his grace and his mercy, he made you his dwelling place? Did you know that God came tabernacled in flesh upon this earth? In the tabernacle, we, ha we saw him dwelling there, beholding the glory of the only begotten Son. Hallelujah. God made flesh, Christ Jesus, tabernacling in an earthly body so that you and I may be able to be the tabernacles of God as well. Where the Father has come and made His abode on our lives and in our lives. And so has the Lord Jesus. And so has the Holy Spirit. And oh, what a communion. And oh, what a fellowship it is to come and abide and dwell here. Oh, what a wonderful privilege it is when all of a sudden you step over into this place of complete surrender where you give yourself over to this faith that Christ Jesus would work with inside of you and all these good things have been yours. God in His mercy brings you here. Listen, God in His mercy brings you here. You don't have to rely on your own voice. You don't have to rely. You don't have to rely 
on your own ability to participate. The Holy Ghost will come fill you up and out of your belly will flow rivers and the sound will be the sounds of heaven and, and, the, and the witness will be that the, you are the tabernacle of the living God, that God himself dwells on the inside of you. The sound of Christ Jesus being heard, the power of the Holy Ghost being revealed in the midst of you. Father says, I'm in the midst of you. I'll rejoice over you with singing. Tonight, we want you to grab a hold of the reality of what Father has done for you and just get happy about the cross of Christ. Yeah. Get happy about what He did when He raised up from the dead on the third day. Get happy about what happened when He ascended up on high and led captivity captive and sat down at the right hand of the Father, the majesty, at the throne room, in the throne room of glory, poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost upon us and invited us to step on in with Him. Just stay right there because if you will, everything else that is Jesus you wine and pure and true will be come a reality to you if you begin to turn your eyes towards circumstances and earthly desires earthly thrills and earthly pursuits your own ability your success your failures whatever they may be it'll take you away from this rapture this, this rapture <laughs> Being caught away, looking unto the author and finisher of your faith. This one thing you can be confident of, that he who began a good work in you shall also finish it too. <laughs> Until the day of Christ, if you just look where you're supposed to be looking, amen. If you'll fix your heart where it's supposed to be fixed. If you'll set your affections where they're supposed to be, not on this earth, but in heaven. Look, the cares of this life, I choke you. I see a lot of Christians, they look like they're choking Look like they're choking. Cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, pleasures of this world will choke the fruit, will choke the vine, will choke the life out of you. Choke the life out of you so that you cannot bring forth any fruit into perfection. Just little old sour stuff. Little old sour Christian fruit. Just little old sour, hard Holy Ghost fruit. And all you got to do tonight is say to the husband, come prune me. Come prune me. We'll just cut those old thorny branches off. We'll just cut those, we'll cut those, we'll cut, we'll cut those life sappers off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight, Papa has so given to us the privilege and the ability to be established in Christ Jesus. He has anointed us and given us the privilege to dwell in this realm of divine power and glory. And if we're willing to, and, if, and we go through all these situations and circumstances, and Father is trying our hearts. Father is evaluating us. He's the one who, who searches the heart. And He does so not in a way to disprove us, but to prove us a way to bring us into everything that He's planned for us. And when He sees that hungry and thirsty soul, what He does is He brings forth in our life fruit unto perfection. And when He sees that fruit coming forth, under perfection, matured fruit, he prunes us so that we might bring forth more fruit. He purges us. People trying to live in this glory realm, trying to live in this place free from sin, and they don't. They're not living in the manifest presence. It won't work. They're not living in this fellowship and communion filled up with the Holy Ghost, overflowing with His wonderful things that belong to fellowship with Him. It just won't work. The world around you will begin to attract you and overwhelm you and, and, and distract you. Let me, can I make it really simple for you? You got to sacrifice something. You're either going to sacrifice the riches and the pleasures of heaven that can be experienced right now in His presence, His fullness of joy at His right hand, His pleasures forevermore. Because you want the temporal pleasures of this world that cannot satisfy just cheap thrills. You're going to sacrifice something. Or are you going to sacrifice the temporal pleasures of this life, the cheap thrills, the things that cannot last nor satisfy? 
so that you might have this wonderful fellowship and glory. The choice is yours. You're going to make it all day tomorrow. You're going to make it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's going to be a choice that you make all day long. You can be, con people are, people are consumed with themselves. You got to watch out. The pride of life is very subtle. It is. The pride of life, the, I mean, some, I tell you right now, it's probably easier to deal with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye than it is to deal with the pride of life. Pride of life is covert operator. Too much pride of life has found its place in the halls of God's kingdom and glory. It's very subtle. But you know what? It can all be dealt with the same. The Lord told us to deny ourselves. He told us to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Him. He's called us to forsake, an, to forsake everything. He's called us to abandon ship, to abandon it. <laughs> abandon it. It's going down. Don't stay on it. Get out. Abandon everything. Forsake it all. Come follow Jesus. Come follow him in his fellowship with the Father. Huh? This is like sometimes I think people make following Jesus some kind of sacrificial thing, you know. Oh, man, you got to give up everything. Well, you got to say no to and give up everything in this world, but you're gaining everything that this world cannot even have. I mean, it may, be, it may be a sacrifice, but what you're sacrificing? What you're sacrificing? Really, when it comes down to it, you're sacrificing various forms of torment and sorrow and pain, which is all expressions of death. All you're doing, that's all expressions of death. You know, the next time you get unhappy, I just want you to realize you're expressing death. Sorrow is death. Pain is death. Torment is death. Fear is death. Men are gripped by the death and the torment of Adam's sin. Jesus came that we may have life <laughs> and have it abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in the moment of sigh, hallelujah. and that's why sorrow and sighing has fled away. That's why sorrow and sighing has fled away. He gave me the garment. He gave me a garment. He gave me a mantle. He gave me a garment to praise. Hallelujah. He gave me the oil of joy. I got the oil of joy. I got the garment of praise. I'm a tree of righteousness. What an identity. What a place to dwell. Got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. I'm a tree of righteousness. No more heaviness. No more sorrow. No more sighing. No more dying. Living in Christ Jesus. Living. My body will lay down and die, but I'm going to step right out. And then I'm, I'm going to keep on living. Living forever. Living in Jesus. Got the God. Got the mantle, got a mantle that Elisha would have given everything for. I got a mantle, got the mantle of the Lord, got this mantle of praise, got this garment of praise, got this mantle, this clothing, been endued with this clothing of Christ, clothed with the mantle, endued with the spirit. Got a mantle, got the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. Got the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a tree of righteousness. I'm the planting of the Lord. <laughs> He's the vine and I'm the branch. He's the vine and we're the branches. And I got this fruit. Hallelujah. And I got this grace. Got a hunger for righteousness. Still the lust of the flesh. Got a passion for the kingdom, still the lust of the eye. 
been clothed with his brokenness to the pride of life. Jesus did it all for me and you. Got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. And got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. I got the garment of praise. We got the oil of joy. Got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. I'm a tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. Got the garment of praise. Got the oil of joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woohoo! Hallelujah. mountains be cast into the sea yet I will rejoice I'll be glad in you Lord there's a river that makes glad the city of God and the rivers in me the rivers in you 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 the river of holiness the river of the holy ghost the river of life the river of christ the river the rivers in me the rivers in you oh, in me makes glad the city of oh God the rivers in you the rivers in me uh, hallelujah now that's just how we gonna live right there yeah now when you get some bad news the rivers in me the rivers in you this is where it really works. When your heart is overwhelmed, God will lead you to the rock that is higher than you. When you look around about you and it seems devastation and destructions everywhere, there's no calf in the stall, no fruit on the vine, no one laughing, no one making merry, yet you shall go to your high places and will delight yourself in the living God who's called you up higher still. Yeah. <laughs> The beautiful thing is that you and I get to be endued, endued, clothed with power from on high, endued with, to be able to privilege to put on Christ Jesus. I get to, in the morning, by the mandate and the grace of God, wake up and put on Christ Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. I tell you, the life that Christ Jesus has is better than the life that any rebellious demon of hell has. Those who lie against the truth and make all kinds of lies against God and His anointing. Those who propagate those slanderous things from the beginning. I tell you, God will give you a place of refuge and strength where no power of hell will be able to touch you. Where no sickness nor death will be able to claim you. Where you'll live yourself alive full of Jesus Christ. Christ, full of the things of heavens called abundant, eternal, unlimited, immeasurable life. What a life. God invites you. When you get sad, it's because you begin to pursue something of your own that belongs to this world and it took you prisoner. No, at that moment, at that moment, then turn your heart back to him. Come run to the refuge. Flee to safety. 
the, the Lord is like a high tower. The righteous run in. His name is like a high tower. Is the righteous run in and they're safe. You just flee to the wonderful presence of Jesus, calling upon the name of the Lord, saying, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Turn back my heart, O oh God, lest I should be ensnared with a lie, uh, with a distraction from the enemy and find myself wandering around in e exile. That's what Nod means, exile. Cain was the first to have to be evicted from the presence of the Lord and he went into exile. Hell is exile. The absence of the manifest presence of God is hell to a degree. Ultimately, we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, that all of the powers of darkness and all the rebellious spirits and all the men that followed the power of Antichrist, the spirit that even now works and, and worked even in the days right after Jesus ascended up on high. And the scripture says they will be destroyed and cast out from the presence of the Lord by the power of his glory and from the power of his glory. To be absent from, exiled from the power of His glory and from the presence of the Lord is nothing that you want to be. And Father, I'm going to tell you right now, listen, it's just, He comes to manifest His love for us and, and to us. And, and that, that should be enough of a reason and motivator to want to stay here. Not because you're going to escape the wrath that is to come. Yeah, you will. And, and yeah, God's wrath will be poured out upon sin and iniquity because it's everything opposite of Him. But the motive is His love. The motive is the glory. The motive is, what, is you finding everything that you've been looking for. And it's just all a bunch of cheap thrills that leave you hurting and despairing and sighing and suffering. God delivered us from the pains of death, having loosed the bonds of prison. Hallelujah. From having set the captive free. Having having opened up the prison doors. <laughs> having proclaimed liberty. My life, this is the day. This is the day of Christ Jesus. This is the day of the reign of the Spirit of the Lord. This is the day kingdom and of his power this is the day where he will be magnified in all his people who love him this is the day beautiful thing of it is is that God has given us an anointing to be sons God has given us an anointing to be sons the sons of the living God the first time that the concept of an anointing, a divine empowerment, was given to men is unveiled in Exodus after that God had set up a tabernacle and a place for man to dwell. It was never said that Abraham was anointed. It was never said that uh, so much that Isaac or Jacob was anointed. They just stepped into a blessing. They stepped into an inheritance. There's no doubt that you could begin to think of and conceptualize the certain aspects of the anointing, but it wasn't until God had made a work and made a way for His presence to dwell among people, but suddenly there had to be an anointing, a divine empowerment to be able to function in a heavenly realm. Because everything about God and everything about His temple and His tabernacle represented a heavenly realm. Everything about His covenant and everything about His people, everything that He is is all about heaven. Wherever Jesus is, there's heaven. And the Holy Spirit and the working of the Spirit and the realm of the Spirit is all another testimony of heaven. Hallelujah. Wherever Jesus is, heaven is open. He's here right now, so heavens are open. Hallelujah. Angels ascending and descending. And if you could see... If you'll let God show you and you keep looking hard enough and wanting to see and God will open your eyes and you'll be able to discover that there's a whole lot of things going on. There's more with us than are with them. Whatever them, whoever them and are. <laughs> Whatever it is that's come out against you or coming to destroy you or coming to rob you or try to prevent you. God said be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because <laughs> uh, you, might, you might have spiritual wickedness coming out at you, but I'm telling you, there's more with you than are with them. Just all there is to it. You just need to recognize it. Quit thinking, you're, quit thinking that you're forsaken, that you're abandoned. <laughs> you're not. He's in you. 
If you've been born of the Spirit, if you've been born again, He's in you. I got to do this, otherwise I'm going to take off running. You know, they say that Pentecostals swing from chandeliers. I wish it was one. If it will work, I'd do something. I mean, come on. Listen, we get so excited in the presence of the living God. I mean, look, he, look, Papa energizes us with his glory. Yeah. It's better than anything else that energizes you in the natural. Yeah. Papa will fill you up with so much strength, so much divine power and ability, you will never get sick again. Yeah. Never have disease in your body. Never want sin. Never want communion with evil spirits. Never allow any kind of sorrow. Never allow sadness. Say it and call it an enemy. An enemy of God, an enemy of Christ, and an enemy of your own soul. Yeah. An anointing. A special divine power. Special divine ability. Hallelujah. Woo. God had to give a man a special anointing to be able to stand into it, come and walk into a place that man was cast out of. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, God, the Father, came walking at the spirit of the day, and I know King James says cool of the day, but it's the spirit of the day, calling out for Adam. And Adam ran and hid himself from the presence of the Lord. Many people have not learned how to continue in the manifest presence of the Lord because they're constantly retreating and hiding in shame, hiding because they don't want to listen, hiding because of reproaches, hiding because of condemnation, hiding because of offenses, hiding because the enemy is allowed to, as it were, have an upper hand against them because of various different things that they believe. God ultimately cast them out of the paradise, which is really a synonym for heaven. He cast them out of a realm where they were walking with him and being able in a human fleshly body behold all of his glory. They could see God and the beauty and the, the naked fullness of his glory, unveiled glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, what a place. What a place. Moses couldn't look at, look at that glory. He got to look at, Father allowed him to look from behind. And his face lit up for the rest of his life. His face shone. His, his cell, the cellular makeup of his body and of his skin took on the glory of heaven. It could not go back to being the same. A transfiguration took place, as it were, there for Moses on the mount. Similar to what we've seen happen in Jesus' communion with the Father. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now, the same fellowship I have, I'm going to give it to you. The same anointing that I have with the Father, I give to you. The same place and position that I have with the Father, I give it to you because there is no other one to have. You either in Christ or you not at all in God or near Him or have access to Him. We in Him and He's in us. Hallelujah. There's only one place you and I can be in Jesus. There's only one man who totally overthrew all the powers of darkness, all the powers of the enemy, and that is the man Christ Jesus. And he made a way for you and I to step in, live in him, live by him. Hallelujah. Him live in us. Oh, kind of a supine of fire. I'm telling you right now, you stay right there with that thought and you'll be happy all day long. You stay right there with that thought and faith will grow and, and be strengthened in your life. And you'll begin to say to the storms of life, storms cease, wind be still. It will obey you. You'll find the communion of these works and greater works than these. Hallelujah. Havaro Masara Day, a fellowship. I want to tell you about a place that I have found, a place that I'm living in. It's a place of the continual manifest presence of Jesus. It's a place of a continual manifest presence of the living God where you can feel Him on your body, where you can feel Him in your soul, in your spirit, in your being. Where it's the floods of heaven, the joy, the glory. When you're so filled up with God's presence and His joy and His peace, Satan can't do nothing. True. You've got to come up with new tricks. Because the lust of the flesh won't work on you. The lust of the eye won't work on you. Because you, he comes up trying to give you some kind of lie that's going to make you happy. And you say, look, right, you got more happy than you ever have. You don't need any more happy. You're full of happy. You're full of joy. 
I discovered that people become most vulnerable to Satan because of discouragement. And there's no reason you should ever be discouraged because the encourager has come. The comforter has come. People say, I need help. I tell you, the best help ever could possibly be on your side has come to you. It is one of the names of the Holy Ghost. So just rejoice now and be glad. I told them, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you want me to go around and start casting the devil out of everybody that I see that is sad? Because his sadness is demonic. You can have all the excuses you want for your gloom. You can say that it is part of your culture to be depressed. But it don't matter. God's come to set you free, to create a new heart, a new you, a new me. Hallelujah. Uh, your culture don't matter no more. Uh, your genealogies don't matter no more. I don't care if everybody in your genealogy was melancholy all the way back to Adam. It don't matter no more. A new man's been created in Christ Jesus. A new man raised up by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now to be governed and to be mastered by the Holy Ghost himself. Hallelujah. To be governed and mastered by the Holy Spirit. To be ruled with the rod of Christ Jesus' word. Govern me. Rule over me. Take full control, my Lord. You're my master. I'm your servant. you all that I desire. All my affections are in you. Amen. Amen. If you're risen with Christ, what a miracle. <laughs> Seek those things which are above. Amen. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this yeah. earth. I'm telling you right now, the Lord said, you cannot have anything else important to you except for the kingdom. Mm. I know people say, just try to reduce it to seek first the kingdom of God. And then you can seek something else second and third. It's not what the Lord is saying. He's saying there can be nothing else in your life and nothing else important in your life. Except for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he, and he says it in the context of Matthew chapter 6 like this. Take no thought for what you shall eat. Take no thought for what you shall wear. He brings it down to the very basic essentials of life. And says not even that is allowed to have a place in your affections. Somebody said unreasonable. No, very reasonable. Let your eyes be open and Papa will show you how good he's going to take care of you. How those things will only distract you and pull you away. How there'll be instruments and weapons of the enemy that will keep you from this continual manifest presence, this baptism, this drinking, this continually being filled. You know, Paul said, be continually filled with the Spirit. And I tell you right now, you listen to me, my doctrine is good. To be filled is to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days from now, Acts 1, 5. And then when the, Holy, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And his clothing tongues set upon each one of them and they all began to, be, to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance, utterance as they were filled with the Spirit. Filled. At that moment when they were filled, they were baptized according to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Filled means baptized. God in the New Testament has got one kind of ministry of the Holy Ghost. Baptized. Hallelujah. That's the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God the Holy Ghost does. He comes and overwhelms us being with us and also inside of us. In that day, in that day, in that day, that when that day that you allow the Holy Ghost to come and fill you in such a way, according to the ministry of Jesus in John 14, 18, and 19, in that day you should know that I am in the Father and that you are in me. What a blessed reality. What a great confidence. What a great boldness. What a great assurance when you get a revelation, when you understand that you in Jesus. I'm in Jesus. I can do anything, man. I myself, I can do nothing. But through Christ, being in Jesus, I can do everything. I can do it all through Christ who strengthens me. He's given me an anointing to be a son. A son just like him. 
born of the Father, the Holy Ghost came upon me. Hallelujah. And a holy, wonderful, glorious thing was birthed on the inside of me. It's called the new man. It's called the man of Christ Jesus, the divine nature. It's called, hallelujah, every, the new creation, the new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. All the old things have passed away. Behold, everything is new and all things are of God. Circumcision, uncircumcision matters nothing but a new creation. That's all that matters with the Father. He's created us and after his image and renewed us in his likeness and in his glory. And given to us righteousness and true holiness. Living here over in this presence. It's got to go from just being doctrinal ideas to a living reality. And God the Holy Spirit has come to make us so. Hallelujah. I got a spiritual pair of scissors here tonight. I can cut off all those strings of the, of the past that attach and affix themselves to you. I got a spiritual divine power and authority that will command Satan to quit tormenting and harassing you. And that's the way the fathers willed it. Hallelujah. You can rise up in the same strength of the Lord and the power of his might. And you can be effective in every way that God has commanded and ordained. Because why? Because God has anointed you together with Jesus. And has established you with the Lord Jesus. We've, we, we've come into a place of oneness with him. Of, of communion with him. Where we live by his life. We drink his blood and eat his flesh. We live by his life. He is the manna. He's how we live every day. And there's manna every day. There's fellowship and communion with him every day. There's being overwhelmed with his presence every day. You can't live on yesterday's stuff. Every day is a fresh and new day. Every day you deny yourself. Every day you take up your cross and follow him. That is to do the will of the Father. No matter what it costs. Him, no matter what it takes. You live to do his will. And he's giving you the ability to do it. To forsake all other things. Cleave unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Adam was cast out. And Eve was cast out. Of the paradise of God. Which commonly is referred to as the garden. And garden is a word that means paradise, Hebrew language and the Greek language. The paradise of God is actually more accurate. It's called Eden. He set up a cherubim angel. A cherubim angel is one who is a protector, and he's a protector of God's sacred realm. And he stood with a flaming sword. No one could come back in. Adam and Eve were not fully removed from the presence of the Lord. They were just cast out, cast out of the heavenly realm and out of that paradise. Because we know that Abel was then to offer a sacrifice and God sent fire out of, his, out of the realms of glory and consumed Abel's sacrifice. And there was an interaction. We see the faith of Abel is numbered with the faith of those who stand even in this day that are uh, listed in the, the chapter of Hebrews 11 in the halls of faith. But there was no way to come back in that heavenly realm. And then when God, when God then had made a tabernacle and he, and he fashioned a place that would be separated from the whole of the world, all of the earth, one little small area would represent the fact that he was completely isolated and separated from all the earth and all mankind. And there was no way to come back in. It's called the holies of holies. Heavens of heavens cannot contain them, but he showed that all mankind was separated from him. He was even separated not only from the world and the heathen and those who did not know him, but even from his covenant people. He said, draw not nigh. Set bounds and limits that they cannot come in. Even the late Levite that was separated under the Lord could not pass the courts. But those special ones of Levi... who were anointed of the Lord, was allowed to come in and minister in the holy place. A place that there was still an allowance of, it, it, of a greater interaction with the Spirit of the Lord, with the presence of the living God, with His manifest glory. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I'm like Joshua. When I first saw the manifest glory, I said, I'm staying right here, I'm not moving, I want more of that. 
He just, when he first saw the manifest glory, when he saw Father come down out of, out of heaven, out of the fire cloud and rest upon the tabernacle, the scripture says he did not depart from the door of the tabernacle. He stayed there. He, that's where he dwelt. He was able and allowed by God because of his hunger to pitch his tent there when everybody else was removed far away because of the transgression. The Lord said, I will not dwell in the midst of you. I will go up with you, but I will not dwell in the midst of you because of your transgression. He pitched his tent way off from them, from the encampment of Israel. The Joshua, he loved it. Moses says to the Lord, Lord, if your presence, if your manifest presence does not go up with us, the Lord's talking about the inheritance that he promised to Abraham, that he, that he confirmed uh, uh, to Jacob. He said, if, you know, if your presence goes not up with us, let me stay here. I'll stay here. The Lord said, my presence will go up with you. But Lord, if your presence does not go up with us, verses 18 and 19 of chapter 33 of Exodus, let me stay right here. I want the manifest presence. Do you want the manifest presence? Yes. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a overwhelming glory. I'm not talking about just something that you get to experience every once in a while in a revival meeting, in a special meeting, in a special anointing service. I'm talking about something that is available for you all the time where you're so filled with the manifest glory and presence of God that it is, that it is better than any revival meeting you've been in. At least we'll match it to start off with. Hallelujah. It will produce joy on the inside of you. Hallelujah. It will produce a love. That, I mean, I remember the first time, the first time that I experienced the miraculous love of God. Now, I understand I, I experienced the love of God. I was raised in a revival home and a revivalist. My dad was a preacher and we in church all the time and I had moments in God that I can remember to this day when I was very young, but there was a event in my life in the early 90s where I was standing and I was preaching. And I'm telling you right now, we've seen great miracles over our lifetime because you can just step into doing miracles right now, just obedience to God, signs, wonders. And we saw many people healed of radical diseases instantaneously just saying, you don't have to, just saying simple things like, you don't have to be sick anymore. And completely cured of incurable diseases, literally. Those who would testify of that even to this very day. And have not just some hysterical confession and proof that they were in, in, had incurable diseases. But there came a event in my life where all of a sudden the Lord allowed me to step into another realm of divine interaction with Him. And I was captivated by a love that is associated with miracles. I mean a compassion that you're just going to have to hunger for. And you can have it too. And I, I used to, you know, there's many times in my life I'm just thinking, you know, I have the power and the glory of God manifest in, in different ways in my life. And it was like, you know, we were singing a special song and, 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 and you know, and just go back and try to sing that song, but it's, nothing would happen. It's like, Lord, where are you at? Where is that glory? Where is that? I want that to happen again. And it's like, you know, it was, somebody said, well, the Lord is just like teasing us. No, he's drawing us. He's drawing us. I discovered that in that manifest presence, I, I got desperate. I got hungry. I wanted more of that. I'm, oh, God, let me see your glory more. Please, Father, please. And then I discovered that what was going on was the Lord was just teaching me how to yield through hunger. Because there didn't have to be two weeks or two months or two days between those events. I didn't have to be two hours. I could live and stay and remain in this glory. Uh, we want this for you. You got to sacrifice something. Why don't you sacrifice the things of this world so you can have heaven. Don't sacrifice heaven for the things of this world. You got to sacrifice something. Why don't you sacrifice every power of sin that would come and tempt you. Every unholy thing that would come mess with your mind. Come mess with your affections and emotions. For God would fill you with holy emotions. Divine appetites. Desires and passions that belong only to the spirit of holiness. Who lives within. And it would come out of your innermost being, out of your passions and attitudes and appetites like unlimited expressions. 
The Holy Ghost would pour out of your being like rivers. Like, 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 like Niagara Falls. Victoria Falls. Now the great rivers of the earth converging on one another. Father couldn't describe it in any other way. So far as we know. So he just talked to us about just how full we're going to get. Somebody said, how filled do you get? I'm going to say you get so full it busts out of you like rivers. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. They shake a mokata. You kick in a nakataya. Meres palaneataya. Aramon bangleatisikara. Akaniki ketutapanishi. There, Moses was commanded by the Lord to put those cherubims there upon the veil. So that all men could recognize that the cherub stood still, stood, preventing all men. You cannot come back into heaven. Out. You cannot come in. You cannot come in. Draw not nine. You cannot come in to this sacred realm. Stay out. Aaron, I'll give you an anointing once a year to come into this place that you may offer the blood that would testify of the coming Redeemer. That will rend this veil. The Holy Ghost thus testifying that a way back into heaven had not yet been made, made, made available, not yet been made known even. Aaron, a special anointing, but the Lord said, I want a cloud in there. You're not allowed to see nothing. You're not allowed to see nothing about heaven. You're not allowed to see nothing about my sacred realm. That's what Papa said. Who desperately loves us so much. And he, uh, the only way he can begin to describe his desperate, passionate love for us is that he was willing to bruise his only begotten son. He was willing to see him crushed and sacrificed at Calvary. He's willing to go all the way and offering this love offering for you and me. But the profane cannot come in. Man was cast out. He had to depart from this place because he chose rebellion. He chose things for his own self. He said, yeah, there's more for me to have here. And I want it. God anoints one man. And for generations, one man was allowed to come. For 1,400 years, one man was allowed to come. One priest. Then Paul spends a lot of time in Hebrews discover, discussing our great high priest and what Jesus did for us as the priest now that stands for us. What happened? What happened? What happened? That veil that separated all the world from the heaven, that veil that separated even the anointed priest of God from the realms of heaven, that veil was rent in the flesh and body of Jesus as he was torn and broken open for you and me at Calvary. So that we can step in. You can step in. You can come in. It cost you. It cost you. It cost you your life in this world. But you can step in. Because now you can have the life of Christ. You can't bring your garbage in. But he says to all. Draw nigh. Everybody come. All those that are near. All those even far away. Come behold me. Come on in. To Jesus Christ, the door, the veil, the chair of him stands no longer there, but Jesus, with open arms, he beckons. With great love and grace in his eyes, he calls all men, he pleads, he says, now come. He says, come. I for one have fallen in love with you. I for one have come to this wonderful place, this wonderful throne of grace. We have access unto him by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have things that Moses could never think of. We have things that David never could understand. We have access to a realm that Daniel would have given all his time for. Dear people, it's time that we no longer be tricked it's time that we no longer be stopped and ensnared. Stop everything. 
that's standing in the way of you and Jesus. Stop everything that's standing in the way of you in a prayer meeting, you in a worship service, you in a place of, of opening up the word and breaking the bread of life. I'm telling you, there is nothing like pouring over the word uh, 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 of God because you're just so hungry for that touch from heaven. There's nothing like the spiritual food. It's spirit. It's life. It's living. It's powerful. It's not religious. People made religion out of it. But they that made religion out of it know nothing of the spirit and life of it. Nothing of about the reality that it's living. His word is creative. Frame the heavens. God now upholds all things by the word of his power. Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm in him and he's in me. His nisi over me. His ha ha. Or his banner over me is love. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm in him and he's in me. His banner over me is love. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm in him and he's in me. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is ah hallelujah hallelujah ah hallelujah 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 now the lord has given us an anointing that we may know him <laughs> He's given us an anointing that we may dwell in Him and abide in Him and live in Him. Wow. He's given us an anointing so that we may be so strong in the strength and the power of His might that every devil in hell, including Lucifer himself, has to listen to everything we got to say. And Satan don't like that. The accuser of the brethren don't like that one little bit. That He who mastered us is now under our foot. Now has to obey us, for we are found, we find ourselves here now in Christ Jesus, who's been exalted above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And we are in him. We are seated together with him in that heavenly realm and given all power and strength, this power and strength of the living God, this wonderful anointing to cast out devils, to break the strongholds of every mind-blinding spirit, to turn nations under Jesus. To turn nations to make disciples of the nations. Satan will intimidate you. He will slander you. He will accuse you. He will try to, he will try to discourage you. Do not listen. Do not listen. When you feel very, very loved and accepted by the Father, you are very much empowered. It's only when you feel discouraged and distant and somehow separated that you feel that there is an opportunity for something else to come and take that place of fellowship. You know, the Spirit of the Lord was talking to me the other night. Ann and I, we were watching one of the old um, recordings of Catherine Coleman. And, and the Spirit of the Lord was just ministering to me about how people have got to be so encouraged that they can go everywhere and do the same works of Christ Jesus because Satan is doing everything to discourage them and tell them that they cannot. You need a bunch of folks around you telling you, get up, you can do this. God's empowered you to do it. He's given you an anointing to live in heaven. And living in heaven, you can command everything that belongs to hell to get lost, to leave, to go. Yeah, must obey you. Yeah. When you're speaking out of heaven. Hallelujah. This is what you're going to do. Your eyes up, lay hands on everything that breathes. 
everything that moves. You know, you want to go right, you want to, my James, it isn't about whether you're worthy of it or deserving of it. You're not worthy or deserving of nothing. Jesus is worthy and deserving of everything. You take your crown off your head and fall at his feet and say, unto you belongs all the praise and the honor and the glory. For you alone have redeemed us from every tribe and nation and tongue and kindred. With your own blood you have washed us and cleansed us. Yeah. He's made you worthy. He's made you able. It's just about obeying him. Now, you get up and obey him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obey him. Cast out devils. First thing you got to be able to do is have authority over devils. Authority over demon spirits if you're going to do anything because Satan's going to try to stop you. He's going to try to stop you in every way. But when you have authority over demon spirits, it's done. It's done. It's just it's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything he wants to try to get off the ground, it won't work because he's already bound. You recognize his lying voice, his lying influence. You take authority over him. Then he's done talking. He, he can't even move. His, he, my goodness. Take his voice away. Praise the Lord Jesus. Watch what's going to happen now. Watch what's, 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 what's going to happen now. Father always works in every generation to bring forth the people who will totally yield to him. He sorts it out. He sorts it out like he sorted out Gideon's army. He sorts it out like he did on the day of Pentecost. He sorts it out a number, a few. doesn't matter, matter how many it there are and then out of those that he's found as he searched it out as he sorted it out that will go all the way with him that will yield completely to him he raises up a great moving of the spirit in the land that changes the the generation changes the culture and i'm gonna be right in the big middle of it hallelujah and i got lots of proofs and lots of witnesses hallelujah you can say and thank you Whatever you want to think and believe about whatever you want to believe. But I believe God. I know what it is he's up to. I know what it is he wants to do. He's told us to go make disciples out of nation. He said to me when I was just recently in Japan, he said, I have all power and authority in heaven and earth. I have all authority, all authority in heaven and earth. Not just in heaven, and I have it in earth. Now I'm just looking for somebody who will agree with me. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now in my name. And make disciples out of all nations. Satan would lie and intimidate us and ridicule us and speak all manner of evil against us to the place that we'll be just like Israel, hiding in the caves, hiding in the, behind the rocks. Because the, because the enemy is too big, too undefeatable. Look at how big he is. Ha. Uh, how can you ever get anything off the ground? They got more than we got. There's no, it's not possible. It's all, it's all's lost. And somebody gets anointed. And somebody gets anointed. Somebody's over there taking care of the sheep. Who is alone, shut in with God, praising him and worshiping him. Hallelujah. Singing all manner of praise. Comes walking out there into a public place and says, What on earth are you guys doing? I, what, a, what, a, what is wrong with you? Don't you know who your God is? Don't you know who you are? Don't you realize you're the people of the Most High? Who is this uncircumcised thing that should be able to threaten you? And men who had so learned to trust within themselves grabbed a hold of their armor and tried to put it on that one anointed. It just cannot fit. Nothing that belongs to men will work here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All I need is the name of the Lord. You may have your sword and shield, but all I have is the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And that's plenty good enough. It'll take care of all of you, everything that opposes the working of the power of God. Every foul spirit of hell that speaks against the truth. Watch what happens. 
they're a popular, there's a popular thing right now where lasciviousness where it, it is allowed and where we will even turn the grace of God into lasciviousness and we don't even know how could things erode to such a point. But God's about to move again with his great power for, this, for the purpose of his son, for the namesake. He will show forth his glory in the midst of his people who know him, who've learned how to smile all the time. Who learn how to come to a place of refuge, to put their trust in God. When everything is absolute crisis, there is a river. River of joy. Hallelujah. Look at here. Let's remind you of verse of scripture in 1 John chapter 2. That's what my son's playing. When my children were born, I stayed upon my face in prayer and fasting and said, Oh God, let not Satan touch my seed. Oh God, let my children be anointed of you. Filled with your spirit, kept by your power. I'm telling you, Father loves us so much when we'll give our whole heart to him, he'll give his whole power to us. You see to it. If we do what's right in his sight, you see to it that all those things that we commit unto him, he will keep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kept by the power of God through faith in the salvation, ready to be revealed. Thank you. <laughs> I remember when I was pretty young and I really was struck by Philip who had seven daughters who prophesied. I said, now, Lord, when I have children, that's what I want. I want all of them to prophesy. Philip, he just kind of, you know, he did his work. He did what God showed him to do and had him to do. And boy, was it great. Huh? He was a man full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whose name was written in the book of books. A word that will be proclaimed forever. He so jumped into the moving of the Spirit. Something that God is going to do again so that the church will have a true witness and a true model. And the world will also have one too. Then he went down to Samaria after having been faithful to the Lord and having purchased great boldness in the faith. He purchased it. Having done the work of a deacon, he purchased great boldness in the faith. He went down to Samaria and preached Jesus and look at the miracles. Huh? Yeah. And then, where, then he's there. Great miracles. The whole city's turned to, full of joy. Turned to Jesus. And the Lord takes him out into the wilderness and he baptizes an Ethiopian and then is the first one that we have witnessed to that was translated. Jesus, you know, was translated all the time. Did you know that Jesus was being translated all the time? He was doing the disappearing thing all the time. You know how the scripture says, he slipped through their hands? Ah, when a bunch of people mad at you, got a hold of you, you got to disappear and slip through their hands. Where'd he go? Disappeared. Caught away. See, I, got a, I have a plan, an evangelistic missionary plan for taking care of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Benghazi, Libya, North Korea, you name it. Translate it in. Preach, power of God moves, and they try to come get you, disappear. Back over here, translate it in. Translate it in. Mecca, preach. I want to I wanna go on their, their big festival day. Uh, right there, stand right there. Just about the time they rush on you, disappear. Then when you reappear, they're going to be ready to repent. <laughs> I believe the Father wants to do those kinds of things. Just look at somebody who's so radical to believe who's not stuck in their little world of earthly interest yep. and care. Yep. True. Yes. Watch, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
there is a realm of the manifested sons. I know creation groans and travails even unto now, but watch what happens when the redeemed of the Lord go out with joy and led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing and all the trees clap their hands. That ain't groaning anymore. That ain't groaning anymore. That ain't groaning anymore. That ain't travailing anymore. Uh -uh. When a redeemed of the Lord, when those ransomed by the Savior, those walking in the light as he's in the light, living in the glory that he is given by the Spirit of the Lord. Watch what happens. You're going to have to choose to walk away from those earthly, worldly things that have captivated you, those compromises that have invaded you. <laughs> Say, I belong to you, Lord. I'm nothing but for you. I'm just living for you, Jesus. I'm purchased by you, Lord. All my identities in you, Lord Jesus. I want nothing else to do. But signs, wonders, and miracles. Preaching this good news. Turning people from the power of Satan to the power of God. Open up the eyes of the blind. Proclaiming the day of the Lord. This is the day of Christ Jesus. He's reigning in his church right now. Hallelujah. His church is alive and well. This church is alive and well. You'll find people full of the Holy Ghost in every denomination. Every done, every denomination. Yes, you will. Everywhere the name of Jesus is mentioned, you'll find somebody who's taken hold of this power of the Lord. Just watch when God begins to bring them together as a great company, as they flow together. Huh, with one mind, with one heart, with one mouth, as, as, as many members functioning as one body. Just watch what happens. Just watch. As God gathers together those whose hearts are sold out to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch. 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 The days of the Lord are upon us. Yeah, I know gross darkness is over the land. Darkness is over the people and gross darkness is over the land. But you're going to rise. You're going to rise. Hallelujah. His church is going to arise with the glory of the Lord. For his glory has risen upon us. Hallelujah. See, Peromo, Sadan, and Nikkei, the Shabbat day. Ha, ha, ha. Ning, ain't I say. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 27 of. 1 John chapter 2 says, But the anointing which we have received of him abides in me. It abides. Yep. It's in me. He's in me. Holy Ghost is in me. Christ is in me. If you Christ isn't in you, then you are reprobate. So you don't have a, you want to go with choice A. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't believe that Christ is in you, then we'll lay hands on you tonight. And with a true and sincere heart, if you call upon the God, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you just with the mention of that name and he will form Christ in you. He will form Christ in you. Paul said, we, this is what we minister. Christ in you. Your confidence of glory. Hallelujah. But the anointing that is in you you got an anointing. Say, I've been anointing. And I've received it. He gave it to as many as would believe. He gave to them a power to be sons of God. That's what Jesus did. That's what God did. As many as believed. Everyone who would receive this wonderful work of grace. This power of the new birth. He gave us 
the ability to be the sons of God. We've received an anointing. That anointing abides in us. And we need that no man teach us, but the same anointed teaches you all things and is truth. That's the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit. Every time, anytime anyone received an anointing, they received a special endowment of power that came directly to them by the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. This is activated by the Spirit of truth, whom the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us, who's now come to lead us and guide us, who's come to give us everything and show and reveal everything to us that belongs to the Father. Hallelujah. Who we're supposed to live by and live in and walk in, be led by and guided by. And this is what the anointing teaches us. That you and I should abide in him. He abides in us. The anointing that abides in us by Christ Jesus who abides in us teaches us exactly what we're supposed to be doing. This is supposed to be affecting your thinking. Ah, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't need anybody to come and remind me. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness. His Holy Spirit is here and he's testifying to me that I am a son of God. He's, the Holy Spirit is here and he's testifying. He's saying, you really, really are. You are truly, yes, you are. You are a son of God. Now you listen to me. You abide over here. You're not living your own life. You're living this glorious life. You don't need to live that dull, lifeless life. You don't need to live that fleshly human life. You've been given the life for the spirit that is in Christ Jesus. That's what he's testifying of. He's constantly reminded me. He's constantly bringing into my remembrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't need somebody to come along. Oh, pastor, if you just come along to us and, and, and sing and bring Joshua and bring the word and let's, and let's go everywhere we are and, and, and sing and worship and, and continually remind us and oh, so that we can still feel that same anointing and that same glory, then I'm sure that we'll be able to do better. You have someone far, far greater going with you everywhere. Be careful because you might learn how to ignore him. Be careful. God gave you a, took away the stony heart and gave you a heart of flesh that you might be sensitive to his voice. That you might be sensitive to his will. You might be tenderhearted towards that which he wants, tenderhearted towards his correction. When I was a little guy, I was very tenderhearted. If somebody scolded me at all, I'd, I'd start crying. I had, I had no... I was a baby. I was ten hard. <laughs> Ruthiana was the same way. Just those skull. <laughs> just tender hearted. That's the way I am. To, that's what God gave me. He gave me a tender heart towards him. As soon as the Holy Ghost cricks me and just starts sobbing. Huh? And then we'd be hard headed. Hard headed, hard hearted. Hard hearted, hard headed. Stiff neck, stubborn, won't respond. Got to say it over and over and over again, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. No, God, Papa, gave you, gave you tender heart, so that you can hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, "Abide, dwell right here. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. You're mine. You might purchase possession. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you every good and perfect thing. Just constantly encouraging us. He is comforting us. He's the God of all comfort. I mean, did you know God was the God of all comfort? If you look at most Christians, you'd think he's the God of all sorrow. God of all discouragement. He's God of all comfort. Hallelujah. He comforts you in all your tribulations so that you can be joyful in all your tribulations. So you can count it all joy when you step into the fire. You call it, oh God, let your fire fall. Sounds good, doesn't it? And the fire falls and you're screaming and hollering, what's happening now? <laughs> because he's come, he's come, let the fire fall upon us. Let everything that doesn't belong to you burn away. Maybe that's some of the things that you liked. Maybe that's some of the things that you had a vision for and was hoping to have more of. And it's going up in the smoke around you. Count it all joy because he's forming and shaping you. 
It's trying you and bringing you forth as gold tried in the fire, prepared in every good work. Those good works are those works of Jesus and greater works than these. Hallelujah. Somebody said he screamed at us all night. No, I shouted. <laughs> I shouted. I'm shouting to the Lord. I'm buying the Magile and the Magadai. I see the Gur, the Bang, the Late Pass. Mangay and among the last of I. Somebody said, Why don't I have a continuous joy, unspeakable joy, rivers of joy? Because you got something holding on to. You holding on to. God told you to let go of. He told you to change about some things. And He's told you to have a different attitude about things and you've not been willing to. Hallelujah. And very soon what's going to happen is you're going to get so hungry to live in the joy all the time, you're going to go ahead and obey him. Because <laughs> the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Isn't that good? Yeah, hey, I tell you, you get around God and you get around God's people, he'll ruin you. <laughs> he'll ruin you. You won't be good for nothing in this world. <laughs> You'll be only fit for heaven. You won't be happy with nothing in this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Are we... You know, it's wonderful to be kept by the power of God, to have a place reserved in heaven right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you step out of this life into the next, God has a tabernacle prepared for you. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, 2, and 3. But then there comes the day of resurrection where your body will be raised up like Jesus' body was raised up. And you will take on a glory and a splendor that cannot even be spoken of right now. It's unlawful to even utter it. Because men wouldn't be able to understand or comprehend it. But it's fashioned in His glorious likeness and in His glorious body so much that we will be able to see him as he is, for we shall be like him, John said. This is the mansion that the Lord has gone, the dwelling, the tabernacle that he's gone to prepare for us. He's gone to prepare a place for us in his presence, you see. Ha, huh. ha, huh. not on a hilltop, in his presence. Somebody said, oh, my mansion's going to have 50 50 rooms, I'm going to have a giant refrigerator. Listen, he's got something, something better for you than that. I know that might sound good to you. Some of you have a small refrigerator and just maybe a couple of rooms. Listen, God's got something better than you could ever imagine. He's prepared for you a body, a glory, a resurrected realm where you'll be able to behold him in all the fullness of who he is. And I'm telling you, you can't even imagine what that is till you step in and taste how good the Lord is. Taste how wonderful his manifest presence is. What, what glory he's given when these rivers flow. What blessings there are to know when you're baptized with the spirit of holiness. The spirit of the Lord immersed into the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. I'm about to get raptured. If I disappear, don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, if I fall down dead, don't try to raise me up because I'm not coming back. <laughs> if I leave this body, leave me alone. My heart is drawn to him. Every day my heart is drawn that much more to him. Every day my heart's more fixed on him. And that is the work of grace that Father has for everybody in this place Everybody watching me by the web, maybe you're watching on YouTube. That is what the grace of God has brought to all, every man. No one's left out. Some people say, oh, if I just had that kind of faith. I'm telling you right now, that is a lie from hell. God has set his affections on you. And with his loving kindness and tender mercies, he draws you. And I break the power of that lie right now in the name of Jesus. Say to you, leave the mind of men alone. God's given his power and ability to turn men from Satan to God, from darkness to light. Isn't that beautiful? 
Isn't that beautiful? That's the heavenly vision that Paul talks about in Acts 26. That's the heavenly vision to open up the blinded eyes. If our gospel be hid, it's hid from those whom the God of this world has blinded, and we've got the power to unblind them. Cause them to see. Amen. Reverse that thing. I'm going to close tonight with, I think I am, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get in a habit of walking around with my Bible all the time. I'm so happy to see that many of you got rid of your electronics and brought an, a real Bible that has weight to it and pages. Because I don't know half the time whether people are being text, uh, texting or, or answering an email. You know what I'm saying? And I've watched as Satan spend so much time distracting people anyways. He's a master at that craft. Huh? Every important text message that you've been waiting for happened right at the moment in time, as it were. <laughs> that the power of God is about to touch you. Huh? So get yourself a Bible. It's got some weight to it. It's got pages. Amen. Hallelujah. God has a kind of name Spend time with the Word of God. Spend time getting the Word of God to a place that you meditate on the Word enough to mem mem re remember it, memorize it. Okay? Somebody said, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can. Give yourself, give yourself to studying the Word, memorizing the Word. Huh? Live in the Word. Knowing the Word so you can live it. Huh? These things ought to be treasures to you, precious to you. They ought to uh, direct your attention to those things that you are that are most important for you to do if you want what is true success. Because you got to understand, God hates diverse weights and measures, and He's going to bring every one of us into question one day, and He's going to bring us into an accountability about all those things that we gave ourselves to memorizing and remembering and learning and to do because it brought us success in this life. While all the time that which was most important was just left for the preacher to preach. You need to know and understand every fruit of the Spirit. And there's far more than nine believe me. There's much, there's far more than, there's many more than just the nine that are listed in Galatians chapter 5, 22. Three. Because these are precious things and we give, our ten, we give all attendance to making our calling and election sure. Because, first of all, Father notices. Father counts. A book of remembrance is written for those who continually seek His face and seek His presence and continually talk on his, concern, you know, talk concerning His word and concerning His promises. The Lord had numbered the total number of people in Israel, though that there were hundreds, perhaps hundreds of millions of people in Israel at the time. He knew that 7,000 did not bow their knee to Baal. Did not bow their knee to the, the things that the rest of the covenant people were running after and calling good. And saying it's fine. God's pleased with it. Father's, Father looks and sees those who are hungry, thirsting after righteousness. He fills them. Father has a reward for those who diligently seek Him. Father likes to be loved. Father likes to be sought after. He likes it. He sought for those who would worship Him in spirit and truth. He rejoices and delights in those who believe those words which He's testified concerning Himself and of His Son. He loves those who believe what he's described concerning you and me of his affection and his love for us, of his grace and of his mercy. Father doesn't want you to be beaten down anymore with discouragement and lies, with slanders and accusations. He wants you to grab a hold of the call of his loving kindness and tender mercies that says, come, be filled. Come and abide here. Come dwell here. Come stay here in my presence. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be filled with joy that there be no more sorrow inside you. That your face be not sorrowful, that your voice be not sorrowful, that your word be not sorrowful. That there be no more death, no more sighing on your life. No more murmuring, no more complaining in your life. 
but rather the giving of thanks. Brother Joshua will be here on April the 2nd, which is not too far from now, right? A week from this Wednesday. And Brother Joshua and his family and many of his friends, some of them that I know, I know quite a number of his family. They've been thrown in prison. They've been persecuted for Jesus. If there weren't anybody could complain, they could go ahead and complain. Some of the women and the way that the women were treated. Brother Yun's wife was tattooed and abused on a daily basis in prison. She could complain. I'm not going to hear her complaining. She should be sorrowful and sad and all messed up inside, needing inner healing. She don't need no inner healing. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. You must understand what I'm saying. People got all these excuses. And through their excuses, they fortify themselves against the moving of God that would bring salvation and deliverance. And, you know, I, I don't know if Brother Joshua would talk about it, but the last time that they threw him in prison... When they threw him in prison, he was being threatened by the guards, and, and they just threw him in the worst group of criminals. All for preaching the gospel. He's, he's over a network of, of people that, that are millions. He's a pastor of millions, really. Leader of millions in the House Church of China. And he went to bed that night, just joy and rejoicing, being threatened. People said, ah, if your God was God, why would you be in here, and especially with us, because... We, you don't know what we're going to do to you. He just laid down in the glory that he walked into the prison with. Because I'm going to tell you, dear people, there's a beautiful thing about the, spe the anointing, special graces of God. And when you find yourself in crisis, there is a grace and a glory that will rest upon you. A manifest presence. If you've never felt the manifest presence before then, when you persecuted, there is a glory and a grace that will rest upon you. That's why you should rejoice when you're persecuted. Because uh -huh. the glory and grace of God rests on you. There's a manifest presence that you get to live in. Praise God. You don't have to be in that level of persecution to have as well. That's what I'm talking about tonight. It's very important to me to help you understand that there is a deeper realm of living in the presence of the Lord than what you've experienced so far. All you need to be is hungry, and hungry will teach you how to yield. God has given you the capacity. He's given you an anointing to live like this. He's given you the ability to live with him like this, to live in oneness with him, to be able to step into this realm of divine grace and fellowship with him like was not available to anyone since Adam's sin till Jesus rose up again and poured out the Holy Ghost. Joshua laid down to go to bed that night and he glowed. He, it was dark, dark prison, and he glowed. The place was lit up with the radiant glory of God glowing. People didn't sleep that night. He was the only one who slept. <laughs> he glowed every night. He glowed. He was a sign and a wonder in the prison. They were going to put him in there for many years. They had to let him go because he... <laughs> Things were working in reverse. He wasn't being shut down. He was being lit up. You want to come. You want to come. Brother Joshua will be in a baseball cap and sunglasses for a very important reason. And uh, it, he's not trying to be cool. There will be no st live streaming if people that want to watch it on the web. I'm sorry. Can't be that. Can't do that. You're going to have to come live and in person. <laughs> and you really want to be live and in person. I've been thinking about every time that we have special guests not streaming it. <laughs> because I just, I just want people to get, I want people to get the maximum blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me read something about the Lord Jesus here quickly in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Thank you, living God. 
Say, it's wonderful to have the joy of the Lord. It's wonderful to have the joy of the Lord. Now, when you're feeling sad, say that. Say, well, it's just so wonderful to have the joy of the Lord. Let your faith be effectual, effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you. Just, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have this joy. It's wonderful to have this peace, this manifest presence of the living God. Start talking more about the manifest presence of the living God, and you're going to have it. Start talking more about the joy of the Lord, and you're going to have it. Start talking about m more about the things of God, the things of the Holy Ghost, and you're going to experience them. Experience them. Amen. I know where Hebrews is. I just can't find it right now. Lord, because you have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness, the oil of joy above all your companions. Everything that Abraham inherited from God, he was able to give to Isaac. Which was then passed to Jacob and passed to the 12 tribes of Israel. Ultimately, that inheritance and that promise and that blessing was all realized in Christ Jesus, the seed. That blessing to be able to bless the nations of the earth that blessing to have his seed be as the sand of the sea, the stars in the heaven, all fulfilled in Jesus, who brought all nations and called out all people to come. And all people, all the descendants of Adam throughout all time will come into the kingdom as a result of the seed, Christ Jesus. Otherwise, all men would have been lost for all time. Everything that Jesus inherited. <laughs> everything that he inherited. Everything that the Father poured out upon him and gave to him. He's given it to us. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come and show us all things that belong to him. And he said all things that the Father had and has is, is. Therefore he would take everything that he has and he would reveal it to us and he would show it. The Holy Spirit has come. To show us that we can really do these things, that we really have this anointing, that we really have this place, that we really have this position, that we really have this right, that we really have this authority, that we really have this power. And he's come to show us the full scope of it. Defined only by the power of God himself. So that we might be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. So that he says to you and I... That we are co-inheritors with God. Ha! <laughs> co-inheritors with Christ Jesus. Pretty radical, huh? <laughs> Pretty radical, huh? I just got to read one more verse. Because I just got to let you see it. You know, I just quoted Romans 8, um, 17, but let me show you this real quickly. In, in Galatians chapter 4, I want you to see this quickly. I want you to hold on to it. Don't let it slip. It's so important that the Lord wrote it down and sealed it and kept it till now, to this day. 
because he knew I was going to read it <laughs> and that I was going to delight in it and I was going to fully take hold of it and this is what I was going to be and that's all I want to be. This is what I want to do with my life. This is it. And that you were going to be sit here, sitting here and that you were going to hear it and that you were going to read it and that you likewise were going to have the same response to God that's it. That's all I want to do with my life. I just I want to live for you, fully for you, in you. Loving you. Doing what you purpose me to do. Paul discusses that as long as a child is a servant, though he be Lord of all, though he's the inheritor, he differs nothing from a servant. But when he becomes a full age, at that moment in time, everything that, the, everything that his father had, all the inheritance that was available to him, now is his to do with it as it was ordained for him to do. As a good son. And then Paul says, and that is who we are. We have been given the sonship. I know that many people's Bible says adoption. Adoption doesn't belong there. It's sonship. No one's adopted into the kingdom. They born into the kingdom. You listen to me. I'm not going to go into the Greek language tonight. Those who've been around me for a while, you know i am spending much time talking about that particular issue of being born by the Spirit, born again. You're not adopted into this. You're born into it. He's given to us sonship by birthright, by being born of God, born of His seed, the incorruptible seed, born of the Spirit, born of the resurrection. Radical stuff, isn't it? It's who we are. Listen to this. He redeemed them that were under the law that we might receive sonship. And because you are sons, that really emphasizes it, doesn't it? Verse 6. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, God's my papa. Papa God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put my papa on the Gideon friends, long name, long Baba God, long name, long beginning, long name, long Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love listening to it because that's the way that that's Papua, Papua New Guinea and for Father God, the Father, that's Papa God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, did, I fell in love with that the first time I heard it. That's it, Papa God. That's Abba. That's Abba. That's, that's, that's the Avi in the Hebrew language that got translated through transliteration, you know, to Abba. It's Avi. Papa. Papa. Say Papa. Say Papa. Somebody said to me today, they said to me, do you think the Papa God, do you think Papa? They said like this, they, they, they've been around, I think been around Gina. You think Papa, you think <laughs> Papa will heal me of my cancer? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You, 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 you tell me, are you asking me, do you think your dad would want to cure, cure your cancer and he's got the power to cure you? My goodness, he'd die for you if it needed be. And he did. He did. And he did. Come on in. Don't stay outside no more. Bang a key. Come in. Come. Come in. Bo. Come in. Bo. In Hebrew. Bo. Come in. I say in there, see how many languages we can come up. Yeah, come in. Come. Come in. Come. Come in. Don't stay outside no more. Come in. Be fully vested here. Verse 7. Therefore, you are no more considered a servant, but a son. You're not a servant that's heir of everything that belongs to Papa God. Now you are a son, a matured son, not a child, a son. God did not give you the anointing to be a child. <laughs> he gave you the anointing to be a son. 
And that anointing as sonship is only defined in Christ Jesus. It is not defined anywhere else. It cannot be modeled anywhere else. Theologically, it cannot be described in any other terms than Christ Jesus, the Son. For we in him and he's in us and everything that he has inherited, he's given to us. Look here, verse 7. Wherefore you are no more a servant but a son, and because you are a son, then you are heir of God. And you the heir. And then you the heir. And you're not an heir that differs nothing more than a servant. You an heir that is a son who's been given authority to go everywhere, cast out devils, raise the dead, tell the blind eyes to open, tell Satan he's got to go, set the captives free, tell him, proclaim him. Glorious liberty. This is the day. This is the day of Christ Jesus. This is the day of the movings of our God. All religion will bow its knee. Every hindrance will not bother me. It must obey. Get out of the way. This is the day of the Lord. Amen. Stand with me, will you? Rise up. Rise up in his strength. Rise up in his glory. Rise up in this anointing. Listen, what Christ Jesus inherited, he's given to each one of us, and the Holy Spirit's come to show, it, show you that it's true. Father's purpose that every one of us be conformed to the image of the Son. He's purposed that every one of us believe that we are anointed for the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because He's anointed us. The same anointing that Jesus had received from the Father, He gave to us. The same drink, the same baptism, the same relationship, everything. You can say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me. You can say that. Say that. To preach good news to the poor, to bind up the broken in heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable day of the Lord. Today, the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't need to say this, but today the blood of Jesus Christ is available for the sins of the whole world. Nobody that you meet, should you refrain from saying, do you know the blood of Jesus is available to cleanse off your sin, to cleanse you from your sin? That is the most important thing that people need to hear. Don't be ashamed. Don't be threatened by the powers of darkness. Don't think that that will fall as meaningless idle words, for it is the power of the gospel. All heaven backs up those words. People sneak around and hide. Who should be valiant for the Lord and boldly proclaim this good news. For his blood was shed not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And should we fail to tell them? Should we talk about evolution? Should we talk about this and that? Should we talk about this story and that story, this weather program, that weather, whatever nonsense that somehow people seem to be willing to engage in when all the time Christ Jesus paid a high and great price. God went to great expense to make that blood available, not only for us, but for the sins of the whole world. We must tell the people, listen, his blood is available for you to cleanse you from your sin. Yeah. Will you be cleansed? Mm -hmm. They can stand there and look, like, look at you in any way that they want to look. It does not matter. The bottom line of it is, that's the power of God's word unto salvation. Yeah. It yeah. may be that they fall down on their knees and repent. I'm going to tell you right now, the more you do it, the greater the anointing to be manifest through you. And you're going to see some of that. They may look like they, they may look at you like you're something, you know, from another planet. They, they may, they, who knows? The fact of it is that word of God will burn within their life. It will be their only hope for ever coming to know the living God and escaping a place 
of torment, being cast out of his presence forever. Destroyed from the power of his glory and from his presence. That'd be hell enough. Now we're going to go ahead and testify. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's anointed you to preach the good news. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's anointed you to testify of these things. Build your children up in the faith that are around you. Help them to realize that Christ Jesus is on their side. They're, 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 they're safe. They're protected. They're well taken care of. Don't, leave, they don't, let, don't, let, don't let them live a day in insecurity. Make them obey. Don't let them disrespect you. Because they're going to just learn how to disrespect God. Don't allow rebellion. People think that love is going to allow rebellion. Love, ain't going to, love is not going to allow rebellion. Love will crush it. Love will destroy it. And not by the arm of flesh, but by the power of the Spirit of the Lord, by the anointing that breaks off every yoke. We're not going to dwell with anointing. We're not going to dwell with rebellion. We're going to dwell with the anointing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just ask every one of you, just raise your hands towards heaven. I know many of you need different things from God. I know many of you need things in the realms of the spirit. Many of you need things in the realms of your physical body. Many of you need things in the realms also, a financial provision, the Lord's concerned about them all. I tell you, when you live in the manifest presence of the Lord, all these good things are yours. Faith builds up to a place where you just, whatever you ask, you'll have it. And Father's purpose that you and I live in that kind of an inheritance. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name. I command you to be blessed. I command the hindrance to get out of the way. In Jesus' name. Now, fire God. Now. Now. Changed. Now rise up. Now rise up in the strength of the Lord and power of His mind. Now rise up. Now take hold of this realm of God's divine power and glory. Now in Jesus' name. 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 I want all of you just come up here and stand before the Lord just if I just come. Everybody in this place, you have a need, so I want you to come. I'm not going to ask you if you have a need, come. Every one of you in this place, you have a need. I want you to come, so just come because I know you have a need. I want you to come. Savitri, come. Just come, just come stand up here. Come gather up. Come gather up here before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah.